Welcome to the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick. This is episode number 45. Hey there, and welcome. Episode number 45. How about that? (laughs) I don't know what magic happened last week, but I heard from a whole bunch of you who couldn't believe we were already 44 episodes in to the Transforming Anxiety Podcast. I know. (laughs) It's pretty wild. So much fun. And we are just getting started. I promise I have so much great stuff coming your way on the podcast, with new programs, you name it. So if you haven't already, be sure you've subscribed so you don't miss anything. I'm going to have some bonus episodes coming up, um, maybe even this year yet, this month. So when those come out, you won't want to miss those. So be sure you've subscribed so you don't miss those. And also, would you pretty please take a moment to leave a rating and review as well? That would be super helpful to our anxious friends who want to find podcasts just like this one. Podcasts that will help them in real and practical ways. Sound good? Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Now, before we even get started today, I don't want to forget to mention that I made a worksheet to go along with this episode. It's short, it's simple, but I wanted you to have a handy guide to walk you through the five elements that we're going to go through today and just give you a place to put your thoughts, both your current thoughts and your ideal fantasy thoughts. So grab that over at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash podcast slash 45. All right. So this week we're talking about investing in yourself. And I don't mean financially, although of course that's a very real thing and maybe a topic for another day. But today we're going to talk about investing in yourself as in what do you take your time, your energy, your effort, your discipline to focus on intentionally as an investment in yourself? This has nothing to do with investing money in yourself whatsoever. Sound good? So firstly, what does it mean to invest? I looked up the definition because that's what I do. And an investment is both a thing that is worth buying because it may be profitable or useful in the future. This is probably what most of us think of when we think of investment, right? But an investment is also an act of devoting time, effort, or energy to a particular undertaking with the expectation of a worthwhile result. And that is what we're talking about today, folks. We are interested in worthwhile results or what I'm going to call the return on your investment today and the time, effort, or energy that you want to deliberately spend in the interest of that return, that worthwhile result. Yes? Yes. All right. So let's dive right in. I've got five elements that I want to cover today and consider as really important investments in yourself, investments to consistently make in yourself. And the first one is sleep. So we all know that the recommendation is to get seven or eight hours of sleep every single night. That's what suits adults best. And we could go down the rabbit hole of how hard it is to get to bed on time or how you like the evening hours and want to enjoy that downtime or how you're good at getting enough sleep on the weekends, but the weekdays are just so tough. We've all heard all of it, right? But think about sleep in terms of an investment. What is the return on your investment when you get good quality sleep? So I'll give you some examples from my personal experience. When I invest in myself and get a good eight hours of sleep, I wake up more easily. I wake up feeling rested and I wake up a little before my alarm clock goes off, which is always kind of fun. I feel ready for the day instead of feeling as if I have to pull myself into the day. And I do better throughout the day. I make better decisions about things like exercise and food, but I also tend to have better conversations with friends, family, colleagues, And I tend to make better business decisions because my mind feels clear, feels open. So another great return on the investment of quality sleep is overall health. 
I find that I stay well and that I don't get sick as often. And that's the day to day. But of course, there's plenty of research out there to show that a healthy immune system is more than just fighting off colds, right? I found an interesting Harvard article, and I'll link to this in the show notes, a Harvard article that talks about the hidden costs of insufficient sleep. Things like diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, these things are all negatively impacted when you're not sleeping well. And there are studies, of course, that indicate cheating yourself on sleep can actually lead to a shortened lifespan. So I also found an interesting article on the Anxiety and, Depression's, uh, the Anxiety and Depression Association of America's website. It's kind of a mouthful. That indicated a kind of feedback loop where sleep and anxiety are concerned. You may have experienced sleep difficulties as the result of anxiety, but there are studies that also show that a lack of sleep can create more anxiety. Now, this may sound like a chicken or the egg, what the heck do I do kind of scenario, but put the action of sleep into the model. Really think about the framework of the model and how this applies. If sleeping is an action, then it's certainly easier to take the action of sleeping from certain feelings. Feelings may be like relaxed or calm. And where do feelings come from? Feelings come from your thoughts. So tune in to how you're thinking about sleep, how you're thinking about bedtime, maybe even how you're thinking about time overall, and find the thoughts that create feelings that make it either easier or more difficult to take the action of sleeping. You see, does that make sense? If you're thinking thoughts that create a lot of anxiety or stress or overwhelm right as you're getting ready for bed or trying to go to sleep, it's going to be more difficult to get to sleep in an easygoing way. But if you can set yourself up emotionally to easily get to sleep, then it's a whole other ball game. This is exactly the kind of stuff we do in one-on-one coaching, by the way. If you're interested, come on over to kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash coaching and schedule a consult call with me. Let's get to the bottom of your sleep issues, okay? All right, but back to investing in sleep. Really think about the return on the investment of sleep for your overall health, for your experience with anxiety and stress. Sleep is a really vital element to invest your time, your energy, and your effort towards. The returns on that investment are incredible. All right, so that's sleep. Up next, movement. If I had a nickel (laughs) for every time I hear someone say, oh, I'd love to exercise more. I just can't find the time. Or I know I should be exercising every day. I just don't really want to. You know right? You've heard these same things. Perhaps you've even said these things. But again, consider movement as an investment. What is the return on the investment of moving your body daily? What do you get out of that? What is the return on the investment if you don't move your body often? What do you get when you do not exercise regularly? So let's consider for a moment movement through the lens of anxiety, okay? What do anxiety and exercise have to do with each other? So I was on a call recently with a client and he was feeling really anxious while we were talking. And I said, okay, get up and walk around. Just pace around your apartment. And we kept talking and a few minutes later, I asked him how he was feeling. And he was kind of surprised, but he said he was feeling much better, that he'd almost forgotten that he was feeling anxious when we got on the phone. Anxiety is a special experience (laughs) in that it is an emotion, right? But it also has that strong physical and physiological, physiological component to it. Anxiety is the nervous system's fight or flight stress response, and it's activated by your brain dumping hormones and neurotransmitters into your bloodstream. It's a physical biochemical state for your body to be in. So what does all of that mean? The point is, when you're feeling anxious, when you're in that fight or flight stress response, you have extra energy, energy that is meant to help you in fighting or fleeing for your life, right? So where does that energy go if you aren't fighting or fleeing for your life? What happens to all of that adrenaline? It just spins around in your body. 
So when you, as someone who was prone to feeling a little bit or a lot anxious, invest in yourself by moving your body every single day, you are giving your body a natural release valve for all of that extra energy on the regular. You're consistently allowing yourself to expend that extra adrenaline, that extra cortisol, that fight or flight stress response, and all of its power has a place to go. So I'm going to link to an article from the Mayo Clinic on the positive effects that exercise has on anxiety and depression. It's always helpful, I find, to have resources on this stuff. So I'm linking to a lot of this in the show notes for this episode. So we've talked about investing in sleep. We've talked about the return on the investment in movement, and both are great for overall health, but also where anxiety in particular is concerned, yes? So now let's talk food. And I think of this category as both food and drink, right? Whatever you're putting into your body, nourishment overall. So this is an investment that we make many times every single day. Every time we put something in our mouths, we're investing in ourselves, As Melissa Urban says in her book, It Starts With Food, which is one of the first Whole30 books, the food you eat either makes you more healthy or less healthy. Those are your options. And I think we have to consider the health of our food, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. So she goes on to say, you cannot out-exercise poor food choices and the resulting hormonal disruption. And some of those hormones... Yep, some of those hormones lead to elevated levels of anxiety in your body because they're some of the same hormones at work in the fight or flight stress response. Now, listen, I don't say this as a lecture on how 100% of the things you eat and drink need to be 100% healthy. Even Melissa Urban wrote a book called Food Freedom where she explores the freedom of choice in making healthy and occasionally not so healthy choices food and drink wise. But this is a reminder that what you're eating is an investment in yourself. It's one of the most tangible and immediate investments that you can make in yourself on a continuous basis. So there's a great book called The Anti-Anxiety Food Solution by Trudy Scott. She explores the particulars of food and anxiety. And there are things that she suggests avoiding altogether, things like sugar, caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine. There are foods that she suggests experimenting with, things like gluten specifically, and ways to generally boost your digestion, to balance brain chemistry, and address vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So I'm going to link to her site in the show notes. It's pretty interesting stuff. Now, I touched on this when I said I consider this category to also include what you are drinking. And I know I'm not alone in this from talking to many clients and my allies over at Tempest Sobriety School, which used to be Hip Sobriety. But I think the more we talk about this, the better. We have to collectively consider the role alcohol is playing in our health, physical, mental, and emotional health. What are you investing in when you choose alcohol? It's an interesting question to consider, right? What's the return on the investment when you drink? You spend your time, your money, your energy on alcohol, and what do you get out of the deal? Have you seen that meme on the internet? (laughs) The one that says, dear wine, we had a deal. You were supposed to make me funnier, smarter, sexier, and a better dancer. I've seen the video. We need to talk. (laughs) Right? Have you seen that? And I know that seems kind of funny on the surface, but really, when you consider what you're investing in alcohol, And you see that quote unquote video, (laughs) which is the return on what you're investing. It's well worth it to reconsider how that's working out for some of you anyway, right? Maybe not for all of you. All right. That was food. We've covered sleep, movement, food. We're going to switch gears a little bit. And now we're going to talk about media. And I'm using the term media to cover everything from social media to what you're watching to what you're reading. Everything that you're choosing to consume from the online and written world. All of that is media for the sake of this conversation. So I found a great study on Science Daily about the overall time that teens are spending on social media. 
and how it does, or rather, does not have an effect on rates of anxiety and depression. So the whole point of the study was it's not about the time that we're spending on these things necessarily. What the study did show was that it was about quality, about the overall context of the social media engagement that had an effect on teens. This kind of makes sense, right? If you're an active user of social media who constantly seeks out engaging and interesting content, content that inspires you or teaches you, then social media could be a really uplifting and energizing source of information for you. But if you interact with social media as a way to beat yourself up, compare yourself to others, go down distracting rabbit holes, or wind up following a whole bunch of users that you just don't feel connected to, then social media and your time on those platforms can likely feel awful. So Gary V, have you heard of him? Gary V is an entrepreneur. He's like, the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. And he's always posting videos of him explaining things like, it's not social media that's the problem. (laughs) It's the human beings who are interacting with social media in negative ways that are the problem. It's not video games or Instagram or whatever that's wrong with kids. It's parents who don't set boundaries. It's parents who don't teach their kids how to set boundaries around this stuff. It's so good. But basically, to bring all kinds of media into play, everything from social media to the magazines that you're reading, whether they're online or in print, to the shows that you're watching on TV and Netflix, to the books that you're reading, there are amazing options available to us, right? We live in the most luxurious time ever on the planet because we have such an abundance of information and entertainment available to us. But we have to be very cognizant of how we're curating the things that are coming into our brains, right? So let's take this back to investing. If you're investing some of your day in reading, what are you going to choose to read? You can choose books, glossy magazines, newspapers, so many options. What do you want to read? What are you going to invest your time, your energy, and your effort towards? What are you going to get out of what you're reading? What's the return when you invest your time, energy, and effort towards reading whatever you've chosen? Do you learn something? Do you feel inspired? Do you feel uplifted or hopeful or smarter? (laughs) Or do you feel bummed out? Like you're not measuring up somehow. Do you feel deflated? Do you get anxious? Check in with yourself. You're investing in yourself every time you pick something up to read. So be careful about the notifications that your phone is sending you. Be careful about the things that are coming through your social feeds and whatever printed material is you're picking up to read. You are the curator of your life, really. Picture yourself as the curator for the museum of your mind. You get to choose what comes in. You get to say no to certain things And you get to say yes to things you love and want to learn and read more about. Check in with the outcome. What do you see as the result of the investment that you're making? Are you curating the things that lead towards the most optimal returns? These are really good questions to consider, right? All right, last up is relationships. So at this point, you get what I'm saying about looking at the return on your investment. What are you getting out of the time, the energy, and the effort that you're putting forth? Do you like the return on your investments? Does the return serve you? Does the return feel good? Does the return take you where you want to go in your life? So the same is 100% true of our relationships. We're in relationship with all of these elements, sleep, food, movement, media. But think too of the people in your life the actual relationships that you have chosen, some that maybe you've just fallen into and some that are, let's be honest, totally convenient and easy, right? So some relationships are a no-brainer for us. The relationship that I have with my kids, for example, is an easy one when I consider what I want to invest. I am happy to pour my energy and my time and my effort into my boys. The return on that investment feels so good even when they're grumpy, (laughs) right? It's still so good. 
But other relationships are a bit more complicated (laughs) or whatever word you want to use. For some of you, it's family or in-laws. For some, it's friends. For some, it may be neighbors or coworkers or colleagues. But think about your relationships as investments. You get a return on the investment you make in every relationship in your life. Some of those returns are great, but some are really toxic or negative or just deflating. Some, if not all, of our relationships have seasons. So sometimes we invest more than we get in return. And at other times, we get a huge return with very little investment. Relationships can be very fluid this way. But for the sake of this topic, I just want you to consider the people in your life and how well it's all working for you. Things may not look or feel perfectly balanced every single day, sure. But there is an overall sense of great return on the investments that you're making in the people around you. Is that true? Do you feel love and support and fun or whatever feelings you want to be feeling about the people in your life? It's good to stop and ask these questions from time to time. I don't know about you, but I have found that sometimes I've held on to relationships that have expired in some way. Sometimes a new relationship pops up and it's worth a huge investment. There's a strong ebb and flow here, but again, just worth looking at. All right, that's it for this week. That's it for investing in yourself. And see, we didn't talk about money even once. (laughs) investing is not all finances the investment you make using your time your energy your effort and discipline those investments are vital parts to transformation transformation doesn't happen without them so check in see where you're at with each of these elements sleep movement food media and relationships where are you making good investments when you look at the return you're getting on your current investments Where is it working? Where is it not working? Just good to know, right? First, you get aware. And from there, you can start making huge changes and shifts in your life. All right. Don't forget to grab the worksheet that goes along with this episode. You can find it over at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash podcast slash 45. It's free. You can download it right away. It's a quick and easy guide to get you going with your own investments and making this work really personal to you. So next week, next week, we're going to be talking about end of year anxiety. It's that time, right? We're looking at the end of 2019 and also at the end of a decade. Jeez. So we're going to be talking about the pressures, the stressors, the overwhelm, the worry that you may be experiencing as we move towards 2020. End of year anxiety next week. So look for that. I will see you at the same time, same place next week. And until then, take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly McCormick. For more information, you can go to www.kellyhanlonmccormick.com and find me on Instagram at khanlonmccormick. Music is by Jesse Blake. The song is Ritual, and you can find out more about him at www.jesseblakemusic.com.